Hey guys, welcome back. It's Claytano. Thank you so much for tuning in as always. And today we are going to be diving deep into her Tate and be... <laughs> I can't, I can't even say that. It sounds like I'm saying something else, right? Before we get into that though, guys, a quick message from our sponsors as well as a much cleaner shaven Claytana. Today's video is sponsored by Raid Shadow Legends. And guys, I want you to forget everything you know about mobile games because one of the most ambitious RPG projects oh. of 2019 has just been released and it's about to change everything. Playing Raid is the most immersive experience you'll find on a smartphone and it can really only be compared to the biggest PC and console titles and the best part is it's completely free. Raid has all of the features you'd expect from a brand new RPG title like an amazing storyline, awesome 3D graphics, boss fights, PvP battles, and hundreds of champions to collect and customize. But I never expected to get this level of performance out of a mobile game and you can just see the crazy level of detail that goes into these champions. Raid is getting big really fast. Make sure you guys get in early and starting now will give you a huge head start on your competition. There's also a special launch tournament with crazy in-game prizes as well as real life prize packs. So go to the description of this video right now and only download Raid through my links in order to get 50,000 silver and a free epic champion as a part of the new player program courtesy of the dev team. But don't forget to join my clan before that. Just search for soup and hit me up. All right, guys, so now that you downloaded Rage Shadow Legends and have successfully joined my guild, we can finally get into the video. And of course, guys, I do appreciate your patience bearing with me through those sponsorships because without those sponsorships, I wouldn't be able to make these videos and my channel would not be possible. So thank you guys for doing that and clicking on the link in the description below. But we're going to be diving into some RTA today and taking a look at good old Johnny Turbo's Speed Cleave RTA team built around her Tate. Now, his last match here has not, 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 not using her Tate, but the reason why is because this person took one of his key units. So he has five specific units that he uses for his Speed Cleave team and Tiano is one of them. So if somebody takes one of those units, it does actually mess him up just a little bit, but he does have some backup plans that he goes to. But I really want to take a look at like these three matches here because he um, pretty much won these all, all three of these and he used the same comp for each and every single one. All right. At first when I was looking at this comp though, I was like, that's pretty clever because he's almost forcing them to ban Tiana every single time. Like it's almost a for sure ban that they have to ban Tiana because if they don't ban Tiana, then they have this crazy Malaka that's just gonna put a bomb down and then they have the, um, the hurt taste that's just gonna put a hurt teething on your monsters. All right, so he gave him some attack buff, but he got rid of it super quickly. But then here we go with the hurt Tate removes the buffs, gains another turn, and then puts some damage onto Amelia, and then drops the bombs with Malaka, finishes off the Asima. And at this point, he's pretty much done. Like, there's nothing that he can really do at this point because the Hurtate's just gonna start doing so much damage. Again, stole the buffs, gains a turn, drops it down, Amelia's dead, and it's over. Just as fast as it started, it's completely over. And after this, we'll go over the skills and you guys can actually understand actually how this unit works. And a lot of people have been using Hurtate in R5 for insanely fast R5 runs. Like the fastest I've seen was like six seconds. I don't, I don't know, this is something, something stupid, crazy. They basically just one shot of the boss and it was because of Hurtate. Um, but let's go ahead and move on to the next one here. Let me pull up my favorites again one more time. Go to Johnny Turbo. And so it's this one against the Korean player here. And it's a it's a little bit different comp. You, you'd think that this is a little bit harder to defeat because it has the Vanessa as well as the Triana. And then on top of that, there is a Perna. So you're thinking, dang, this is this is hard. And I know I know that it's hard to beat because my team is very similar to his team in a sense where I'm trying to like single target snipe out units. And it's kind of what he's doing with Hurtate a little bit. 
Um, but he also has that scary bomb capability from Malaka. And it's not even like, it's not even a, I don't know, I don't know what you call it, a, uh, a Dove or anything, it's a Malaka. So in this case, again, forced to ban out the Tiana because if you don't ban out the Tiana, you're gonna be left with no buffs and bombs on you and it's gonna be really rough. Unless you have like a cleanser on your team, it's gonna be really rough. Uh, even with missing, um, or even with only two units not having will, still went for the kill and got it. He's probably gonna kill either he has to kill Triana here first. And then of course, anytime one of his units dies, like that Sierra dies, it gives her tape more stacks. So yeah, he he's actually going after Perna. Interesting. Takes the bus from Perna, but then kills the Diana, pops the Triana passive, and Diana should be dead here next turn. Okay, so this is lasting a little bit longer, but okay, Diana's dead there. Per his Perna actually goes after Malaka instead, but I think her Tate is just gonna one shot the Perna because he does so much damage. Yep, <laughs> see you later, Perna. Thanks for coming out, buddy. Now he's gonna have full stacks again, a plus with the attack power boost as well, so Vanessa's pretty much done. He's, oh, he actually didn't. He didn't steal enough from him. Okay, interesting. But he gained three stacks back from Malaka dying. Plus the Hurtate is actually built on Violent as well. So he stole the will, gained another buff, and then dropped the hammer down onto Vanessa after that. And then from here, he can pretty much just hit auto and solo out the Triana, because there's no way, there's no way the Triana is gonna do anything. Yeah, he's trying to heal, but like, this person should just quit at this point. There's no way that he can win. All right, so the last and final match we're gonna take a look at is Conqueror 3. So we've looked at G3, G2, and then Conqueror 3 now. And honestly, sometimes a little bit more nerve-wracking fighting against Conqueror 3s because you, I mean, you might you might die, right? If, if, you, if you lose, you'll lose a lot of points. If you lose against a G3 player, you might lose like four or five points, maybe, maybe even less than that. But if you lose against a C3, somebody that's 150 points lower than you, you're gonna be in for some hurting. So in this case, he doesn't ban Tiana, and surprisingly enough, he actually kills the Tiana before it even gets a chance to move. Now, he does get the buff again, steals buffs from Perna, starts to kill Perna, one-shots it, procs the passive, drops the bombs down, Interestingly enough, he actually used the third skill, which I thought was a little bit interesting. I'm sorry, yeah, the third skill from Malaka, because that then procced the Camila's passive. But he does have five stacks now. The, uh, the water Cuba enough does a lot of damage as well, and all he really needs to focus on is Camila, and at this point there's really nothing he can do. He can't even kill the Hurtate, he's so tanky. Down goes Perna, and then that's really all that's left over. Yep, easy. So it works in all levels of RTA, obviously, and uh, it's, it's kind of insane. It's hard to counter, for sure, because you can't really build tanky against it, you can't really build... Um, you, you, there's honestly not much that can counter. You have to be very specific in what you use, and you have to kind of get a little bit lucky to actually beat it as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at Hurtate's skills. And I know you guys are probably looking at my account thinking like, damn, this guy's like really good at this game. He's really farming up those rainbow mods. Uh, but no, this is the China server that I'm on because my global server, I didn't know you could have like a certain amount of limit to how many friends you can have or how many favorites you can have for RTA. And I can't figure out how to remove people from my favorites, unfortunately. So I had to come to the China server to actually put good old Johnny Turbo on my favorites list. Um, but as far as Hurtate is concerned, pulling up his skills here, this is this is the money maker right here, okay? Endless Desire absorbs 25%, 10% instead of it's a boss. That's the nerf that they had to the R5 um, because it was just taking so much and just one-shotting everything. Um, of your attack power and defense per knowledge from the enemy target's attack power and defense. In addition, you have five knowledge 
steals all beneficial effects granted on the enemy and instantly gains another turn. That just sounds kind of broken, but it is a LD95, so I'm not really gonna complain about it too much. And then after that, this skill can be used when you have at least one knowledge and all knowledge will be consumed once you use the skill. So even if you just have one knowledge, you're gaining 25% of your attack power and defense per knowledge. It's, it's crazy. So it stacks up to five times, which is 125%. Now, gaining another turn is also insane because you could just strip buffs. There's no stopping that. It just happens. 100%. Steals all beneficial effects on the enemy and instantly gains another turn. Steals them. He gives them to himself. Doesn't just remove them. He steals them. This guy is just a thief. He's like Assassin's Creed style, takes everything. He takes your your kids, your mother, your baby blanket, everything. He takes your kid's baby blanket. He takes your mom's baby blanket that might have been handed down to you. Like he takes everything from you and leaves you with nothing other than death. And then of course he, he gains knowledge passive um, anytime there's... Anytime he's granted with a beneficial effect. So it's not as crazy as like Bulwark where he's gaining knowledge anytime you or an enemy is granted with a beneficial effect. That would be super insane, but it's kind of like the Odin skill where anytime he's granted with a beneficial effect, he gains that knowledge. But anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like. Also hit that subscribe button as well. Don't forget to download Raid Shadow Legends using the link in the description below. Thank you so much for them for sponsoring this video as well. And aside from that, guys, thank you so much for watching. As always, stay soupy, don't be potatoes, and I'll see you guys in the next one. All right, peace.